Hello, I'm Philip Muggleston, and in this series of videos we're covering the predictive capabilities native to SAP HANA. In this video we're going to look at exponential regression. Now exponential regression is similar to the regression we've already seen. We can do single with a, one exponential variable here and one dependent variable, or we could do multiple exponential regression. We'll see that in the next video. So what does the curve look like with exponential regression? Well, it looks a little bit like this. See, it rises exponentially. So the approach we're going to take is basically the same. It's what we've done for all the other regressions. We're going to uh, run a procedure with the PAL to build our model, and then we can predict future values of spend based on income using the model. So again, we, if we have a value of income here, we can go up to where it fits the curve and then follow that across to identify what the value of spend would be for a specific value of income. So let's have a look at the code. So here we are in HANA Studio and we can see the data set. It's the same one we've been using previously, the customers, where we have 150 rows, so 150 observations in our data set, and we can see income based on uh, lifetime spend. So what we're looking to do is build a model where income is the explanatory variable and we want it to help us predict the lifetime spend of that customer. So let's have a look at the code. Now the code we've got here is very similar to what we've seen in previous videos for regression. Uh, we need to build a signature table, we need to build the table types and we need to set up the signature table with those types in there. We have two imports, we have data and parameters, and we have four outputs, up to four, with the coefficient, the fitted, the significance, and optionally the PMML as well. Now the key thing to remember here is when we're calling the wrapper generator, if we want to use exponential regression, we need to use the exp, exp prefix on the name of the algorithm we want to call. Um, below we can see we've got our collection of data. This is the same as we've had previously. So for example, taking the ID, then life spend, our dependent variable, and income, our explanatory variable uh, from the customer's table. So we create a little view to have just those columns. Um, we create our standard tables for the others. And also we can create the view we've seen before where for the fitted results, we actually join that with our original data so that we can compare the fitted value with the actual data that we were seeing. We'll see an example of that in a minute. In terms of the parameters, uh, it's pretty much what we've already seen. We always have the number of threads, which is a performance tuning option. We have the variable num. It's very relevant in this case because here we're doing actually a, a, a simple exponential regression, so a single. Uh, we only have one uh, explanatory variable, so we need to set the value of variable num to be 1. And then we can actually make sure the tables are empty and run the algorithm itself. So let's go ahead and run that. So the results are in. It's run very, pretty quickly. Let's now just refresh our list of tables. And we'll see that we've got some new tables created. We have in fact got the uh, coefficient and the significance and also the fitted tables that we can look at. So let's have a quick look at the coefficient. We can see here, this basically gives us the algorithm that will be used, or the, the equation, um, when the predictive analysis library is actually going to predict values for lifetime spend. So it basically is 4 plus 0 0.07 times um, the value of income with an exponential factor built into it. So we don't need to worry about applying that equation ourselves, the predictive analysis library will do it for us. And if we were to look at the significance file, this is where we've seen before, it gives us an idea about how uh, useful the model is. So looking at R squared, it's 0 0.77, which is reasonably high, not a bad number. And we can see the value for F, which is 501. And you saw in previous videos how we can use the S distribution, F distribution calculator uh, or, or use a, a regular F distribution table to actually look up and to see how useful the F value we've got is based on being significant at 95th percentile or very significant at 99th percentile. So we can see here we've got 150 
uh, in this example, 150 uh, uh, observations in our data set. We have one, so just one uh, explanatory independent variable. So it should be 150 minus one. Plus we take one more, which is a constant. That will give us 148. We can look for the very significant of 0 0.99 and run the calculation. And then we see it calculates the value of 6.81. And if we now compare that with 501, we can see we have a very significant model that we've created here. So what we can also do is look at the uh, fitted data. Now, the best thing to do here is to look at the view. So we look at our views. We've created a view where we took the fitted data and joined it with the original data. So we have the lifespan fitted column here. So what we can do is make a little report on that. So let's have the ID. Let's just first show income against lifetime spend. This is our original data, as we've already seen at the beginning. But if we were to then swap lifetime spend, replace it with the fitted value, this gives us an idea of our exponential curve. In fact, it doesn't look to be too much exponential, probably because this data set is not necessarily that well suited to uh, an exponential model. However, this is how it would look. So. Now we've created our model, um, it's up to us to, to then decide to use it. So we can now start to predict some values. And to do that, we would, as always, uh, use the PAL to create a procedure. This time, we say to the wrapper generator, we want to forecast with EXPR for exponential regression. So we want to forecast using exponential regression. That's, that's the key for what we need to put in the wrapper generator. Uh, the rest of the code is basically the same as we've seen elsewhere with uh, our income in input data, which has got the ID and the income value, which is our explanatory variable. And then I've created a view here so we can actually take the results, our predicted table, and join that with the original data so that we can actually uh, compare exactly what's going on. And in this case, we can just maybe create another a uh, couple of observations with the value of income 2.5 and 7.5 respectively. We can run that and then we will get to see the results. So let's give that a run. Code runs in just a couple of seconds. And now if we're to refresh our views, we have a predicted view that we created here. And if we preview that, we can see we've got 152 rows because we've got two new rows at the bottom, two new observations that were created for us. And if we were to analyze that, again, doing it the classic way, and we take income and lifetime spend. Now we can see we've got two new values for 151 and for 152, those IDs, where we can see the predicted values. So with an exponential curve, we get slightly different values. So that's it for how we actually work with the exponential uh, regression. In the next video, we'll see how we can do multiple exponential regression.